Here we have an array of numbers. We want to sort them from least to greatest. Here is how the insertion sort algorithm flows. We will begin at index 1. You will look inside and see if the value is less than the value to the left of it. If it is, then we swap the numbers. Then we perform another iteration at the next index. We look at the value. We see if it is less than the one to the left. If it is, we swap them. We go back down the chain. We see if the value is less than the one to the left. If it is, then we swap. And since we are back at zero again, we will perform another iteration at the next index down, starting at index three. And by the end of it, all the numbers should be in order. Let's walk through this process piece by piece according to my pseudocode. We start off with i at index 1. 4 is less than 7. We swap. We decrement i. There's nothing to the left. We start another iteration at index 2. 1 is less than 7. We swap the values. We decrement i. 1 is less than 4. Swap the values. Decrement i. Now we perform another iteration starting at index 3. 6 is less than 7. Swap the values. Decrement i. 6 is not less than 4. But because of the else statement, we're still going to decrement i. 4 is not less than 1. Go ahead and decrement i. Now we set i to the last index and we perform the final iteration. 5 is less than 7. Swap the values. Decrement i. 5 is less than 6. Swap the values. Decrement i. 5 is not less than 4. Decrement i. 4 is not less than 1. Decrement i. There are no more iterations, and the insertion sort function returns. And now we have all of our values in order. In our introductory video, we created a simple setup that we will use to practice our algorithms. We created a widget that we will use as a front end so that we can perform inputs on the algorithm and we created an object class that will hold all the functionality of our algorithm. We also went into the game mode and did a little bit of setup for us to work with our widget. Let's start off by going into the insertion sort object and we will not be needing our game mode anymore. To begin, let's declare a variable. Let's call it array. Let's make it into an integer and hovering over this box you can simply right click and it turns it into this checker box to show that it is turned into an array. You can also do that over here under variable type where you can select it as a single integer, array, a set, and a map. We will be using sets and maps later on down the road but for now let's get used to working with arrays. It's worth noting that the variables that we create in this section are considered global this means that this variable can be accessed by any of the functions that we create inside of this class. I'll show you what I mean later. Let's create a function and let's just call it addNum. This function is going to be how we input numbers into our array. Go ahead and drag the array over and select a getter. Pull off of the getter. Let's type array and under utilities for the array section we can see all the functions that we can use for arrays. It is very worth your time to take a look at this library to see what you have available to you. Throughout the series we will be using a lot of these, but go on ahead on your own and open up some of these functions so that you can learn the tools that you will be working with. For right now we will select the add function. If you click on the input node for the function, we can see in the details panel where we can add an input. If you click on the press button, you can see that it creates a new pin that we can drag out and attach to other nodes. We can rename it and we can change the variable type. 
then we can connect to our add function. This is all that we need out of our add num function. For good practice, I like to add a return node. Let's add another function and let's call it print array. This function will act as our output so that we can see our array displayed on screen. Drag over your array, choose a getter, and off of the getter, drag off, type four, and if you hit enter, it will automatically select a for each loop. For each index of this array, the node will loop through the loop body. Inside the loop body, drag off, type print, print string. This is the index that the array is iterating over, and this is the value that is inside that index. We could simply plug this in, and it will give us a converter that turns the integer into a string, and it will display all the numbers. But I also want it to print out the array index. So let's delete the converter make a little more space. Off of the string pin, let's drag out, search append. The append function is one of many that you can use within the string variable. With it highlighted, hold control D to duplicate. Let's make two of them. Connect these. In the first one, type index. In the other one, give it a little space, type value. Connect in the index and connect in the value. This is all we need for this function. And for good practice, drag off of the complete and type ret enter. And we get a return node to complete the function. A minute ago, I had mentioned that the array variable is global to all of the functions within the class. You can see in our print array function that we can use the variable here and if we tab over to the add num function, we are using the same variable over here. This is why it is considered global. Before we start creating our insertion sort algorithm function, let's go take a look in the widget class. Scroll down to the panels tab and let's throw in a canvas panel. Set the screen size. Under the common tab, let's get a button, size it up a little bit, grab some text, Put it on your button and in the details panel under content let's go into the text and let's type print array this is corresponding to the print array function that we made in our object class come down to inputs get a spin box size it up in the details panel let's come down to display and let's size up the font right now we are in the designer tab let's click on the graph tab and in the graph tab, type event construct. Event construct is very similar to event begin play. If you're ever confused, you can see over in the functions tab that we have 39 overridable functions. You can select the tab and then you can look at all the options that you have. If you don't have an event begin play, then you can look and see that you have an event construct. This is going to be executed when this widget gets created back in the game mode as we did in the last video. Drag out, type construct, and now under the game tab we have construct object from class. Let's search for the insertion sort class that we are creating, and this is the object that we will create. And let's make sure we save it as a variable. Now we have an instance of our insertion sort object that is created inside of our widget class. Tab back over into the designer side, select the print array button, scroll all the way down, add on clicked. It brought us back over into the graph side. Since we saved our insertion sort variable right here, we can now grab it from over here, choose a getter, drag out, and type print. And here we have the option to call the function print array. This is the one that we created back in the insertion sort class. Go back to the designer tab, select the scroll box, go to the bottom. And for the scroll box, this is what we are going to use to enter in our numbers. Let's choose on value committed. Get the insertion sort, search for the add num function, and connect the value to the new number. The truncate is added automatically and any value that comes in as a float will be cut off 
and display only the integer part of it. Compile and save, select play, go ahead and enter some numbers. and click print array. You may see something weird happening. I had only entered in the value 8 once, but it created it twice. Back in the graph side, let's make a little space. Drag off of the commit method, search equals, and we're going to select the equals enum. Drag off of the execute, type b to add a branch node. Plug the enums equal into the condition, and here we can select which commit method we want to use. Let's use on enter. So now the spin box will only give an input when I press the enter button. Now that we have a way to input numbers into our array and to print the array out onto the screen, let's finally start working on the insertion sort algorithm to process the array. Let's go back to the insertion sort object. Let's add another function, and this we'll simply name insertion sort algorithm. This is the pseudocode that we saw in the example earlier. I tailored this code to match how we will be setting it up in blueprints. We already have the array created, except for these numbers, which we will be inputting through the addNum function. And this is the beginning of the insertion sort algorithm here. The first instruction is to create a variable i that is set to zero. This time it is going to be a local variable that is only used within the insertion sort function. Over here in the local variables, click add, call it i, right click to turn it back into a single integer type. We could just leave the default value as 0 over here, but for practice, let's go ahead and set it inside of our stack. The next instruction is to set up a for loop. Drag out, type for, and you have to type the whole thing, for loop. If you're not already familiar with a for loop, you want to really try to get a good understanding of it because the for loop is going to be the core for a lot of functions. When you think about the flow of a for loop, think about the word iteration. It is going to perform everything out of the loop body, starting at the first index, and then when all that stuff is done, it will perform the loop body all over again at the next index, and so on and so forth, all the way up until it has performed the last index. After it has performed the loop body on the last index, the completed pin will execute. Reading off of our pseudocode, we want to start at index 1. Let's use the local variable i that we created, set it, connect it into the loop body, and connect the index. And in the first index, type 1. By default, the for loop is going to increment by 1 each iteration. For the last index, get the array, drag out, search last, and here we can get the last index of the array. This way, no matter how many numbers that you enter into the array, it will always perform up into the very last index. Next in our instructions, we will need a while loop. Drag out, search while, and the while loop needs to have a condition. While whatever condition this is, is true, it will perform this loop body. As soon as this condition becomes false, the loop body stops and it executes the completed pen. The condition is while i is greater than zero. Get the local variable i, drag out, greater than, zero, and connect. While this condition is true, perform this stuff. Next in line is an if statement. For Unreal Engine, we use a branch node. Off of the loop body, drag out, type B, enter, and here is your branch. The condition for the branch node is that the value in the array at index i is less than the value of the array at index i minus 1. Get the array, drag out, and type get. 
with this node, we enter in an index and then it returns the value that is in the array at that index. Plug in I, highlight, control D to duplicate, pull out, get a minus, enter one, connect to the get. The condition is that this value is less than this value. I want to briefly mention that in the original code, we did not need a branch condition. In the original code, this condition was also part of the while loop, and it would have looked like this. Originally, the condition would be that this is true and that this is true. However, in Unreal Engine, running the function this way returns an error because even if this statement is false, it still attempts to get a value that does not exist in the array. And for this reason, I split it apart and use a branch node following the while loop. If this condition is true, perform this stuff. Get the array, drag out, search swap. Select swap array elements, for the swap function, all we need to do is input two indices to switch the values between them. Plug in I, drag out, type minus, enter one. So we have I minus one. This is swapping the values at index of I and at the index of I minus one. The next instruction is to decrement I, get I, type minus minus. If this condition is true, perform this stuff. Else, if it is false, perform this, decrement i. And finally, for good practice, off of the complete on the for loop, let's give it a return node. And this is the insertion sort algorithm in Blueprints. Let's go back to the widget class and hook it up. Back in the designer tab, let's add another button. Throw in some text, call it something. Select the button, go to the bottom, get an on clicked event, get the reference to our insertion sort instance, drag out, and search for the insertion sort algorithm. Compile, save, and click play. Enter in some numbers. Let's print it out to see what we have. Now let's sort them. Print it out. And here are those numbers in order. Make sure that when you exit that you don't have any errors. Let me know in the comments how you did and if you learned anything from this. This video series is about practice. After you can do this by following along, try it yourself from looking at the pseudocode. Once you understand the process, try and do everything from scratch. If you can do that successfully, then you are developing your workflow and starting to understand how to think through and solve a problem logically like it's a puzzle.